I took a lot of heat from the woke shills on woke comic book Twitter. Yes, there's a woke comic book Twitter. It's interesting. There's like this whole silo of people where they're in this little echo chamber where they all have they, them pronouns. And they sit there and they, uh, of course, attack anybody who is critical of what is going on at Marvel or DC Comics. And what's going on at Marvel and DC Comics is killing the industry. I mean, nobody wants to read this stuff. Normal people just tune out because they don't want some navel-gazing thing where somebody's like trying to figure out what gender they are. It's absolutely terrible to read every single time you see these walls of text with no action and that's what uh, superhero comics have turned into and of course they're trying to replace the audience with a mostly female audience is what they think they think oh females buy the most books with the romance genre and all that let's let's take these boy properties and try to make them more female centric so that they read them too it doesn't work because Women already have their romance genre properties. It already exists, right? And so when you're trying to get this audience in there, it doesn't work at all. And of course, they already have the YA genre and all this other stuff too. So it's like, let the boys have their own stuff. Let them have their fun. Let comics be fun. Let it be action-packed. Let X-Men be a group that's fighting against the brotherhood of evil mutants. But they just can't do it. They can't help themselves. The Whisper Network is so entrenched in this industry that it is tearing things apart at the seams. Now, of course, I took a bunch of heat for reporting on X-Men 97. X-Men 97 is a reboot of the animated cartoon from the 90s, which they've already said is going to be woke. It's going to be about the guy's gay black experience. They've already they've already mentioned this, and they've already hired a voice actor for Morph who's all about like pushing the LGBTQ agenda. They've already said that Morph is going to be non-binary. They've already said that they're going to be making changes for a modern audience. And so I, I pointed out that they redesigned Storm and like the animation of it makes Storm really masculine in the way that Storm looks. Storm's wearing a suit. Storm's got the mohawk look, but it's like that, it's that modernized shaved head, uh, you know, uh, uber liberal uh, mohawk look and uh, has kind of a square jaw in the presentation. They're trying, of course, to change the gender to make things gender non-conforming and kind of blur the lines between masculine and feminine, of course, which is what they do with everything uh, these days. It's all about just corrupting people through the visuals and it's obvious that they're doing it. So I took heat from from, uh, the left for doing this and of course because of that heat they made the article go viral it's actually the best article on fandom pulse ever because of that uh, and of course I got some good support too of course Razor Fist uh, tweeted it out and uh, mentioned it and Midnight's Edge uh, Tom Connors also uh, did so so I appreciate you guys for signaling us and making fandom pulse a thing now, if you don't know who I am, I'm the editor-in-chief of Phantom Pulse. I've been writing articles about comic books and the comic book beat for years. I'm the most trusted name in comics news. I'm also a number one best-selling author and award-winning comic creator on that front. So I know what I'm talking about on all this front. And it's going to get worse for X-Men uh, than even I said yesterday. They've unveiled what's happening with the X-Men line. They're doing a line-wide relaunch for the comics in July. And it's absolutely atrocious already. It's going to be that agenda over and over again, and we're going to have to deal with it. Let's take, get into the news. All right, so this is my new book on Kickstarter right now. It's called All Eyes on Ashley. It's got no LGBTQ content to it. Yes, uh, I'm uh, I'm putting a dude in it and making it straight. <laughs> Quite the opposite of Kathleen Kennedy. And so me and Mike S. Miller made a beautiful book right here. It's a lot of fun, and it's actually closing in the next 24 hours. You're going to be super surprised by the contents of this. You're going to open it up, and you're going to be like, this is badass. Trust me on it. And uh, of course, we always produce the best comics here, guys. So don't miss this. Uh, it's got a little bit left. We've had some great backing over the last day. Uh, we've got 24 hours, and I would love to get this book in your hands. It's already completely done and ready to go. The digital books are going to be going out to everybody. And of course, anybody who gets a physical book and all of my campaigns always gets a digital copy with it because we love to get the, the stories out to you, the customers, as fast as possible. Thanks so much for supporting. All right, so let's look at this. So I this is my article. Uh, that got uh, uh, viral yesterday and uh, with this terrible looking storm. It looks like uh, uh, animation from Archer rather than uh, anything else. I mean, it looks like they, they've redesigned X-Men 97 in the laziest way possible. But it goes even crazier. Um, we have an X-Men reboot, which Tom Brevoort, who's the editor of the line here, earlier last year said... It's X-Men. The message is the premise. He's promising that they're going to be putting this woke content into these X-Men books. And now they've unveiled through a Women of Marvel issue, because last month was Black History Month, so you have to have 
you know, the Black Power comics last month. Uh, I, I guess we're still in it. We, we got one more day to go for Black History Month. Next month is International Women's Day, which ends up being a whole month for women, right? Uh, and so they're doing the Women of Marvel. And in that Women of Marvel, they are uh, unveiling the new team leaders for the X-Men, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. Fortunately, we haven't gotten to Pride Month yet because uh, that's going to get even cringier. But you know what's going to happen with X-Men in that, too. Kitty Pride and Rogue are now going to be leading the two teams of X-Men. So traditionally, there's two teams. There's like an uncanny and then a regular X-Men of what goes on. Maybe they call it X-Men Blue and X-Men Gold. Just depends on how they do things. And this is what they show. Look at look at the women of Marvel, like awful uh, <laughs> art, art here. Uh, here, a world where strength and finds another use their combined power to shed light on our darkest nights and inspire others to join our chorus. And there's our, there's our uh, 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 you know, Storm, as I mentioned, wearing uh, looking all masculine. And uh, there we have Kitty Pride and Rogue uh, heading and leading the X-Men teams here. So instead of having Cyclops or Wolverine or uh, Professor X doing things, uh, it's going to be a women team. Now, this has been par for the course of Marvel Comics. They're trying to push everything to where women are in charge of everything. Women lead all the teams. Women are the primary fo focus for the comics. You've seen it already for over the last 10 years. You've seen Thor being replaced by Jane Foster becoming a woman. You saw Iron Man becoming Riri Williams, the woman. And this is exactly, they've got X-Men. They've got a, a huge cast here. So what they're going to do is take the men characters and make sure they're not at the forefront of this anymore. Unless they're gay, of course. Then they'll, then they'll be right there with the, with the white women, right? And they're going to do it in the name of diversity, but nothing's diverse about their comics whatsoever. They all look exactly the same. We They have the same agenda every single time, and they're pushing it harder and further every single outing that they, they go to. Now, X-Men, of course, is on a sales slide, and so what's going to happen is they're going to get an all-new number one issue. They're going to declare it a success, and of course, once these stories are not good, they're going to be uh, dropping in sales again. Now, it's also rumored that Gail Simone is going to be on one of these titles. Gail Simone, of course, has championed feminism in the past. That's kind of been her whole entire shtick, if you know that where she came from. Uh, her background is she kind of got like famous internet-wise because she made fun of Ron Mars's Green Lantern comic. And he said uh, women are, she said women are just being used as uh, abused tools for, for the men folk in the comics. Uh, and, he, and she coined the term fridging because uh, Green Lantern's uh, girlfriend uh, got chopped up and put into a fridge in that. And uh, she said that that was a sexist element of comics. And so we can expect uh, something feminist coming out of there if this is actually the case. Wow. Uh, so this is what they're going to do with the X-Men. I'm surprised they're still calling it X-Men. I mean, X, X, X them might be better or X women uh, might be might be a better term. Uh, you know, it's a gendered uh, title. How terrible. <laughs> but this is where they're going with it, and this is what we can expect. It's going to be a disaster, and of course, we'll be reporting on it every step of the way here as the most trusted name in comics news. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.